Now that we've applied all the correct materials, we're going to move on to the next stage, stage 11, plants and items. We're going to start by adding some plants. So let's go up to the top of the panel menu and left click on the next stage button. That's going to take us to stage 11, plants and items. We're going to go back into 2D. Now, something that you want to be aware of, when you've been working in the design phase of the software, you've been working with shapes. And some of those shapes may have been elevated. If you elevated shapes back when you were in the design phase, your auto elevation may need to be turned back on. Remember, auto elevation is the function in the software that puts things where they're defaulted to go. And plants and trees are defaulted to go down on the ground. If we don't turn auto elevation back on, those plants and trees will go to the last elevation applied. So a good habit to get into is to look in the panel menu under object settings. If auto elevation isn't on, you'll turn it on and that will ensure that all of your plants and trees are going to go down on the ground where they belong. That's a good habit to get into. You just want to make sure when you're inserting something, auto elevation is on. Now we're going to look at our tree category. Plants and trees has a list of all of your plants and tree options. Down at the bottom you'll see trees. Lots of options there. So let's left click on the drop down arrow and narrow our options down. Itemize what we're looking for to the evergreen category. We're looking for a Monterey Cypress. These trees are in alphabetical order, so if I scroll down to the M for Monterey, I'm going to find that Monterey Cypress. You can also do a search at the top and type in exactly the plant or the tree or the item that you're looking for, or even the material. Any uh, library item can be searched for in any part of the uh, program. Left click on Monterey Cypress to select it. Then we'll go down to the bottom of that thumbnail pane and choose either insert one or insert multiple. We want multiple. Let's insert multiple and just left click and drop the Monterey Cypress, several of them across the back wall. And I'm not being too careful about my spacing because I have a spacing tool I'm going to show you. I'm just dropping in the number that I want. And then I'll right click to stop inserting. They're really unevenly spaced. So I can use my aligning and spacing tools to align and space those a little bit better. Something that we haven't talked about is the right click menu. If I right click on my screen or on my grid space, I get, right, I get um, a right click menu that has commonly used functions and features like undo at the top left hand corner or copy, cut and paste. Go to 3D, delete a selected shape. A lot of these are grayed out because they don't apply. But if I right click on a shape, those options change. One of the options that I like in the right click menu is select matching. So if I wanted to select all of these Monterey Cypress, I could right click on the line of the shape. And because I'm right clicking on a shape, the system gives me a few more options. And one of those options is matching down at the bottom right hand corner. Click on matching. Now all of the Monterey Cypress are selected I'll go to my panel menu on the right side, all the way down to the bottom, I'm looking for a line. I want to align those Monterey Cypress to the top or bottom most shape probably. I'm just going to click on bottom. Then we can space or distribute those on the right side. We would choose horizontal here, and those would be spaced horizontally. Now we can deselect those and take a look in 3D. We should have a row of Monterey Cypress spaced evenly, aligned evenly. 
You could always double click on your Monterey Cypress if you want to move it with the gizmo. Let's go back into 2D and we'll add some ornamental grass. When you're finished with a category, uncheck, close the list. The next category that we're looking for are the uh, ground covers. Left click on the subcategory drop down list and choose ornamental grass. Choose whatever you like here. I am going to just choose a just a neat ornamental grass. I'm going to click on the blue fescue, but you can choose whatever you like. I'm going to insert multiple. And I'm going to drop those in. Again, you could use your spacing and aligning tools if you wanted to. I'll probably do that once I get these all inserted. I'm using my insert multiple, and then I'm going to right click when I want to stop inserting. If I wanted to align and space those evenly, I could right click, select matching, do the same alignment that I did with the tree. Align to the top or the bottom and distribute horizontally. Let's take a look at those in 3D. show you one more feature. If I zoom in really closely here I can see those in my alignment section I have an option to align to the slope. Because these are on a slope I can click on align to slope and they just bend a little bit more and align with the slope. Some uh, plants and trees are going to be really impacted by that and some are not. I'm going to go back into 2D and we can start looking at our items library. We can add furniture and lights, water features, kitchen accessories. We have a very large items library to work with. Let's go ahead and go to the ground covers and uncheck the ornamental grass and close that drop down list. The items library is down at the bottom. Uh, of the library. You have plants and trees uh, are, are, are going to appear first, but then when you go down to the bottom you can click on items and that's going to load the items into your library list. Let's look at furniture. If you go to your items you see accessories and characters, fire elements, furniture. You'll notice that we do have the generic items and then we have the manufacturer items or the vendor partners down below. We're just going to go to the generic uh, furniture option. There's a lot of furniture in this list. What we're looking for is the modern woven set. So I'm going to go again there in alphabetical order, kind of looking down modern modern steel set. Modern aluminum set, modern sling, modern woven. I found it. We left click on that and we see items that are um, independent or there can be groupings of items like the dining set. Some of these things are really convenient to insert because their sets already put together for you. And that's what I want on the patio where the fire feature is. I want to include this seating unit. So I'm going to left click on what says seating set and insert one, bringing that over and dropping it in. This template is grouped because we have multiple pieces and there's a blue box around it with a hook on top. That's the rotate function. So a lot of your templates when you insert them have built in tools in the templates. On the corners you have scaling tools to make these items larger or smaller. 
furniture we probably wouldn't scale because it's already to scale. At the top you have the rotating tool. That's going to be really handy because your shapes aren't going to know what orientation they're supposed to be in. We'll often need to left click and drag and rotate our shapes so that they're in the correct orientation. Now I'm looking over at my um, object settings and I'm making sure that my auto elevation is on and it is so that makes sure that those um, shapes are going down even with the patio where we place them. Let's take a look at that in 3D. If you have something selected you can press the letter B and zoom in That looks great. I'm going to deselect it by clicking on the circle with the line through it. Furniture really helps people understand the scale of a space. Next I'm going to add lighting and lighting is really important. We've got a really really large library of lights. So let's go to that library and uncheck what we had checked and close that really long list of furniture. That puts my library kind of back together and I'm looking at my main categories. I don't have to look through a lot of subcategories. Those lists can get pretty long. Let's look at the light category and expand the subcategory of lights. Also a long list. What we're looking for here are the landscape lights. I'm going to go back into 2D. I have a little clearer site reference when I'm in 2D. You can choose whatever landscape light you look or you like and insert them um, uh, in the planter where the uh, trees and the grass are. Left click on the light that you like, insert multiple. And just drop those in. Right click when you're finished. While we're in the category of lights, I'm going to have you go to the pool light category. Pool lights have been programmed to snap on to the walls of the pool and steps. And they've been programmed to snap on to spas. So basically the pool and spa lights are very, very easy to insert because they're programmed to snap on to those shapes. So they work just a little differently. They're actually easier to insert. So from the light category, if you'll go down to pools and spas, I'm going to go to the top and insert the one and a half inch animated light. You can put yours wherever you want. Just expect as you move that light closer to the wall or to a step or a bench, it's going to snap on. And auto elevation is going to do a really good job of putting those at a good elevation. I'm going to go down and insert multiple. And when I bring my cursor over, the pool light symbols are quite small, but if you zoom in really closely, you can see what that looks like. See the small shape on the end of my cursor? I'm going to drag it over and it's going to snap on. Put it right below the spillover. And I'm going to put another one on the opposite end of the pool, but you can put yours wherever you like. Put a couple in the spa. Zooming in really helps because it is such a small shape. And then right click when you're finished. I just need to make a couple of adjustments with my move tool. 
and then we'll go into 3D and see what these lights look like at nighttime. It's really nice when you're doing a presentation for a client and um, you, you go into nighttime mode and all the pretty twinkly lights come on. It's a big wow factor. People really love that. So let's go into 3D. I'll show you how to go to nighttime. When you're in the 3D environment, you can change the lighting. You can press the letter N for night on your keyboard and that will change your lighting from day to dusk to night. Every time you press the letter N, the light changes and it just toggles through day, dusk, and night and back to day again every time you press the letter N. So that's a great way to kind of check your pool lights and make sure everything looks good, your garden lights. Wherever you can get away with putting a light, um, add light to your project and it really does have a big impact. Press the letter N again if you want to go back to daytime. Now I'm going to go back over to my library and uncheck pool and spa lights, close the list, and I'm going to head back into 2D. I'm going to add a sink um, to, my, uh, to my kitchen island. But as I zoom into the kitchen island or where I know the kitchen island should be under the pergola, that pergola is really in my way. I can hide the pergola or I can um, change the appearance so that I can see what's underneath it a little bit better. If I have my pergola selected, I can go to my hide and unhide and I can either hide selected up at the very top if I wanted to hide and unhide that, that's an option. Um, another option would be to go to your pergola setting. That's going to be in your first category where you see house and custom shapes. House, custom shapes, pergolas. To the right of that, if you choose solid, you'll change the appearance of the pergola so that you can see what's underneath. That way we don't have to hide it. Go ahead and click away. Now we're going to go over to our outdoor kitchens and we're going to find our sink. But you know, in the Kitchen Islands category, there's 64 different accessories for our kitchen, uh, for our kitchens, grills, warming drawers, kegerators, mini fridges, things like that. If you wanted to do a search for a sink, we only have a couple of sinks. So that might be a good time to do a search. I don't want to look through all the kitchen items. I want to go up to the top and left click in the search bar. I'm going to type in sink. Now I'm going to click on Equipment Sink, and down at the bottom I see Sink is highlighted. There are two sinks that require an opening, a small one and a large one. Our measurements fit the small one. Left click on the sink that's a little bit smaller, and then Insert One. I'm going to bring this over to the opening and left click and drop it in. It's not in the right orientation, but we've got the rotate tool built into this template. Left click on the little hook at the top and rotate that around so that the faucet is on the correct side. I might zoom in a little bit and make sure that's exactly where I want it to go. The more zoomed in you are, the more accurate your placement. Now, Auto Elevation doesn't know where this is supposed to go. So we'll check the elevation of this by selecting it and going over to our object settings, turning Auto Elevation off. We want the elevation of this to be 3 feet 0 inches. With Auto Elevation turned off, I can apply that value, 3 feet 
0 inches. We'll leave it selected in 2D and go into 3D. Press the letter B to zoom in. Check and make sure everything looks right. Looks great. Let's go back into 2D and we're going to add a water feature to our pool. I'll zoom out and zoom back in on the pool. You know the retaining wall is adjacent to the back of the pool and we can add water descents to that wall. So I'm going to have you add one water descent. We'll make sure it looks perfect. And then I'm going to show you how to copy and paste that so we don't have to re-manipulate uh, the next one. It's a great shortcut. Let's go over to the library and clear what we have searched for and what we have uh, displayed. A good way to do that is at the top of that library, right next to the search function, you're going to see a circle with a line through it. When you click on that, anything that was searched for or checked or clicked on is now gone, right? We've cleared it. We've cleared everything from being selected. I'm going to go down to my items main library and pull that back up. When we do a search or when we work with our favorites or currently used, the main libraries kind of go back um, behind. You just have to click on them to pull them forward again and now we have our items library. What we're looking for here are the water descents and you can locate those um, by searching sheet flow. So up in the search bar we're going to type in sheet flow and you can choose the water element scuppers 12 inch sheet flow. Let's use that one. I'll left click and it'll highlight that one in the list. Left click on it to select it And we'll insert one. We're going to insert one, and uh, and then we'll rotate it and make sure it's uh, make sure it looks great. Then we'll copy and paste it. But before we insert this, we need to turn our auto elevation back on. Go to your optic settings, turn auto elevation on. Now we'll insert that 12-inch sheet flow on the retaining wall. I'll put it right in the middle. It doesn't automatically flip and rotate like the lights did. It's not programmed to do that. Just like the sink, we're going to have to rotate this to the correct orientation. So zoom in and rotate the arrow so it's pointing into the pool. Move it so it's just a little bit outside of the wall. You can left click and drag. The more zoomed in, the more uh, control you have. So if I zoom in really closely, I can move it even just a fraction of an inch. If I'm zoomed out, it snaps onto the grid lines. Now something I know from experience is that auto elevation doesn't always put these scuppers at the correct elevation. So something that will be helpful here and for other smaller shapes that you're working with is that you leave the shape selected in 2D so that when you go into 3D, the gizmo's already on it. So leave it selected, go into 3D, press the letter B, and let's zoom in. Okay, that's not at the correct elevation, but I'll use the gizmo blue arrow to move that down. You'll see a display of the elevation applied. Now if you like the look of that one, you can copy and paste it and create two more just like it. And that's what we want to do. We're going to go back into 2D.
make sure it's selected, and we'll use our shortcuts that we learned earlier for copying and pasting. If you have something selected, you can copy it by pressing Control and the letter C for copy. To paste, you press Control and the letter V as in Victor. Now I'll put one over on the right. I'll press Control V again, put one over on the left. I can use my spacing and aligning tools to make sure that those are spaced and aligned correctly. If I right click on one of the shapes, I see my right click menu that we used earlier. Go to the bottom right hand corner and click on matching. Now go down to align and align to the bottom or the top. I'm going to align to the top most shape. Then I'm going to distribute them horizontally. Let's take a look at those in 3D. Looks great. You can clear and close your library to see the entire 3D environment. We have a lot more accessories that we can add, a lot of staging items. You can add as many lights as you want, as many plants and trees as you want, and um, we have the libraries that are full of those items. Let's go back into 2D and we'll head to the next stage. That's going to take us to stage 12, Presentation. In Presentation mode, we have options for how we want to present our design to our client. If you look at the top of the panel menu, you're going to see Photo, Video, and presentation. Those are different modes that you can use to present to your client. Um, let's go ahead and activate photo mode by clicking on photo. When you want to establish camera locations, you're navigating in the top screen what you want to look at. So let's navigate over to the kitchen island. Now what I'm doing here is I'm setting up camera locations for focal points in my project. So if I wanted to show them the kitchen island, I would set up a camera location. Now that's going to be at the dot bottom of your screen. There's a separator bar. Look on the left side and you'll see new camera location. Click on that and you'll have a little thumbnail of the uh, area that you're focused on. Let's do that again with the spa. I'm just going to navigate over to the spa and I'm just kind of looking at the pool and the spa all together from this end. That's a nice perspective. So I'm going to take a video or I'm sorry establish a camera location there. So once I've got myself in the right place, took me a second to get there but I'm there, I'm going to go down and click on new camera location. Let's do one more. We'll do the seating area over here with the fire feature. Just going to zoom and pan until I have exactly the frame that I want and the picture that I want, and I'll click on new camera location. Now that I have some camera locations established, if you go to the bottom right hand side of the separator bar, you're going to see a button that says take photo or the letter P in parentheses as the hotkey for taking a photo. So you can press the letter P anytime you want to take a photo or a picture. P for picture, P for photo. All right, so another way that you can access these areas that are focal points in your design is you click on the number of the thumbnail. Notice that each one of those thumbnails is numbered. If I press the number one on my keyboard, that's going to take me 
to that first camera location and I'm looking at my kitchen island. I'm gonna press the letter P for picture. Now I have a picture saved of my kitchen island. I'm gonna press the number two. That's gonna take me to my next camera location. I'm gonna press the letter P for picture and that's gonna take a picture. But if I wanna show my client what those lights look like at nighttime, I can use that hotkey that we learned earlier, the letter N for night on your keyboard will change the time of day. So we can press the letter N, take a picture at dusk, press the letter N again, take a picture of those beautiful lights, picture taken. You can put together a really nice portfolio of pictures of different lighting to show your client. So that's one option. Now, if you wanted to do a live presentation for your client or a virtual presentation uh, for your client, actually walk them through the space, you would want to go into presentation mode. When you go into presentation mode, you don't have any interface. The system is basically just immersing you into your project and removing all of the interface so you're just walking through the space without all the buttons to click on. So we'll be relying on some shortcut keys and our mouse to navigate through that space. So you'll kind of want to be prepared for, uh, for that. Um, we'll look at it now by going up to the top of the panel menu and clicking on present or presentation mode. I'll press the letter N so I'm back to daytime. Those numbers will work here too if we wanted to um, go to our camera locations but I can left click to move forward or right click to move backward. When you go into presentation mode, you're automatically in walk mode. That means that we are at an eye level orientation walking through the space and left clicking walks us forward and right clicking walks us backward. The mouse indicates the direction we're looking or the direction we're walking. So if I wanna look up, I move my mouse away from me if I want to look down, I move my mouse toward me. We're really controlling the camera with our mouse, and then the navigation is with the left and the right mouse buttons. So you're just walking through the space. At any time that you would like to take a picture here, you can also take pictures by pressing the letter P. You can also change the time of day again by pressing the letter N for night. And you can change the way you're moving through the space. We're in walk mode, but you can go into what we call fly mode, where you're not restricted to, to this eye level uh, orientation. So if you press the letter F for fly, you're in fly mode now. Look down and hold down your right mouse button. That's a great way to kind of get an aerial view of your project. When you're in fly mode, you could take pictures of a top-down perspective or a uh, bird's eye perspective. You can also fly over the pool and take a swim. So you're not restricted to um, where you are. You can go up in the sky, you can go underwater, you can really go anywhere when you're in fly mode. And you can take pictures at any time, change the time of day. You know, all of those hotkeys are on a list that you can access at any time you're in presentation mode and you need a reminder of what kind of hotkeys you can work with here, press the escape button on your keyboard and that's going to uh, pull up this little uh, list of shortcuts. And they're easy to learn, easy to remember. P for picture, the space bar puts you in what we call auto tour. R for reset or put you back at the beginning. F for fly. W for walk, N for night or time of day, and then X will exit you out of presentation mode. Press escape on your keyboard. That will remove that list. But that's a great way to access that and just kind of help you learn and remember those hotkeys. To get out of presentation mode, press the letter X on your keyboard. X will take you back to where you were, and now you're back to stage 12 presentation.
If you'd like to see those pictures that you took, you want to go to your media viewer. Go to the top left hand corner of your screen and right next to fundamentals, there's a little picture of pictures. It says open media viewer. Now we have our images, our videos, any media is going to be located here. And you can left click and select the media. Over on the right hand side, you can share that media through email, text, and if you have a video and your video is selected, you can choose YouTube and share your client uh, with a link to that video. Really user friendly to uh, work with the video that way. To get back to your project, you are going to click on Fundamentals. Now we're back in Stage 12 Presentation Mode. That's the last thing that we have to do. We've met all of our objectives. We have a complete project. So congratulations, you've completed Fundamentals. Thank you for joining.